For this question, we want to sketch the graph of this function and identify all the properties that will apply. Our function is f of x equals 1 over x, and I'm going to graph this by plotting points. My standard set of points include negative 2, negative 1. I usually choose 0, but 0 is an undefined value for this function. So instead of choosing 0, I'll choose a couple points that are close to 0. On one side, that would be negative 1 half, and the other side, positive 1 half. And then I'll continue with my standard points, which is 1 and 2. Now this function is given um, a name of reciprocal function because every number that you substitute in, you get out the reciprocal of that value. And you'll see that if I substitute negative 2 in, 1 over negative 2, that's negative 1 half. And negative 1 half is the reciprocal of negative 2. I'll continue on with 1 over negative 1, and that's negative 1. Negative 1 is the reciprocal of itself. 1 over negative 1 half. If I take my time simplifying this, I would write this as 1 divided by negative 1 half. And when we divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So that's 1 times negative 2 over 1. So we get negative 2. And negative 2 is the reciprocal of negative 1 half. You can do the same thing with 1 half. 1 over 1 half is the same thing as 1 divided by 1 half. With fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal, and that's 1 times 2 over 1. And that's 2. So 2 is the reciprocal of 1 half. We have 1 over 1, which is 1, and 1 over 2. 1 half is the reciprocal of 2. So I have a list of ordered pairs, which I'll plot on my picture. I have negative 2 and negative 1 half, negative 1, 1, negative 1 half, and negative 2, 1 half and 2. 1, 1, and 2, and 1 half. I can connect these points. I'm going to connect this with uh, keeping in mind that 0 is an undefined value, and that means I'm going to have a break in my line at that, at that place. So I connect these three points together. Connect these three points together demonstrating a break at x equals 0. Some special, special features of this function is it has a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. They both occur at 0. And what that means is that our graph is getting closer and closer to x equals 0. The y approaches infinity and negative infinity. And then here, my graph is approaching a y value of 0, getting closer and closer without ever reaching it. So this is the graph of the rational function. And I want to take a look at these properties that I have listed below. The first property is the function is an odd function. So an odd function has origin symmetry. And origin symmetry is when you have a mirror image over the origin over 0, 0. You're looking for a mirror image in opposite quadrants. So if we look at quadrant 1 as well as quadrant 3, we can see we have a mirror over that origin. If we look in quadrant 2 as well as quadrant 4, you can see that they're both empty, creating a mirror image in those quadrants. So we would select that this function is an odd function. The next question or the next property says the range of our function is negative infinity to infinity. 
And as I look at this, I'm going to hold my ruler horizontally going from bottom to top. And my range starts at negative infinity and continues on. But because of the horizontal asymptote that we discussed earlier, there is a break in the range at zero. So we never achieve a y value of zero. And so the actual range is negative infinity to zero, union with zero to infinity. And so we would not select this property for this function. The next statement, the next property says the function is a linear function. And for the function to be linear, we need the function to be in the form f of x equals mx plus b. So because our variable in this function is in the denominator, that makes it a rational function instead of a linear function. And so we would not select that property. The next property says the function f is an even function. For a function to be even, the graph needs to have y-axis symmetry. And y-axis symmetry is when you have a mirror image over the y-axis. So anything on the right of the graph needs to have a mirror image on the left. And you can see that quadrant one and quadrant two do not mirror each other. So we would not select the property that this is an even function. The next property says the function is increasing on the interval from negative infinity to infinity. As I trace this graph going from left to right, I can see that my y values are decreasing. And if I continue, my y values are still decreasing. So the function is not increasing over the interval negative infinity to infinity. So I would not select this property. The next property says the domain is from negative infinity to infinity. I'm going to hold my ruler vertically. And notice that our domain would start at negative infinity and continue until we get to this vertical asymptote of zero. Zero is not included in the domain, and so the domain is not negative infinity to infinity. The actual domain is negative infinity to zero, union with zero to infinity. So we would not select this property. Then finally, none of the above properties apply that statement is not true since I have selected a property above, so we would not select this property either. So the only property we would select is that the function is an odd function. On this question, we want to use transformations of y equals 1 over x or y equals 1 over x squared to sketch the graph of the rational function. Find all intercepts and the equations of all asymptotes. So by using transformations of these two, this is telling us of our two possible base functions. And looking at the function we're working with, f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 7, we can see that we're going to be using the base function of the x squared since we have x in the denominator and the squared. So we should know what that graph looks like. 1 over x squared is a graph that looks like this. And what we know about this is that the original graph has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 and a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Now we have in our function just one transformation 
we have f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 7. So this plus 7 is the 1 transformation, and it is a vertical shift. We know it's a vertical shift because it's got adding and subtracting. And we're going to go up 7 because it's a plus. And so I'm imagining on this picture here, transforming by going up 7. And when I imagine transforming, I'm also going to shift the asymptotes at the same time. So if I were to shift those asymptotes up, the vertical asymptote doesn't change because if you take a vertical line and you shift it up, it's still a vertical line. However, the horizontal asymptote does move from 0 to 7. So we will now have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 7. And then we can sketch the graph to be like this. So it's the same graph as the original, just shifted up by 7 units. Um, in addition, this question is also asking to find um, any intercepts. You can see by our picture that the graph will never cross the x-axis and it will never cross the y-axis. There are, so there are no intercepts for this particular example. So in this question, we would like to sketch the graph of f of x equals 3 over x minus 3. This is the fun this function is a rational function, and so there are a lot of features and details that we need to work out before we start drawing the picture. The first thing I'm going to start with is finding the domain. And for our rational function, when we find the domain, we set the denominator equal to zero. This is going to give us any restricted values of the function. So I know that when x is equal to 3, this rational function will be undefined, so I need to exclude it from the domain. So I've drawn the number line with a 3 and an open circle. Open circle notation excludes 3 from the set. And I'm shading the rest of the number line. So this number line represents all real numbers except for 3. I want to represent each one of those intervals, and that would be negative infinity to 3, union with 3 to infinity. So we have this one restricted value of 3, and I want to know what is happening at that restricted value. And there are two possibilities that we look at, and the two possibilities are a vertical asymptote or a whole. We want to figure out which one we have. In order to figure out which one we have, we're going to write the numerator and the denominator in factor form. In this example, they both happen to be in factor form already, so there's nothing to do. Once you've written it in factor form, you want to look for common factors. Common factors are going to tell you if you have holes. In this example, because there are no common factors, there will not be a hole in this graph. So I know that that restricted value of 3 is not a hole in the graph. It will be our other option, which is a vertical asymptote. So I now know that there is a vertical asymptote on this graph at x equals 3. Then you want to determine if you have any horizontal asymptotes for your function. So the way you find horizontal asymptotes is to determine the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. You're going to compare them and find um, out the horizontal asymptote from there. In this example, our numerator doesn't have any variables in it, and that means that the degree of that numerator is 0. In the denominator, we have x to the first power 
we have a variable to the first power, and that means the degree is 1. When we compare these to each other, n is less than m. And if we look at our cases of possibilities for horizontal asymptotes, that's the first case where n is less than m. I apologize, I wrote 0 there. n is less than m. And in that case, we have a horizontal asymptote, which is y equals 0. So this particular rational function has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. It's also helpful to find x and y intercepts. These are important features of the graph. So if I'm looking for an x-intercept, I'm going to let y equal 0. And y in this is f of x, because we're writing it in function notation. So we're going to set f of x equals 0. That's 0 equals 3 over x minus 3. I'll solve this equation by clearing fractions. So I'll multiply by x minus 3 on both sides. That's 0 equals 3. That's a false statement. And that means that we have no, um, no x-intercepts for this function. And I'm going to look for a y-intercept. We find y-intercepts by letting x equal 0. So I'll substitute a 0 into the function. That gives 3 over 0 minus 3. 3 over negative 3, which is negative 1. So I have a y-intercept of 0, negative 1. I'm going to put up a grid for us, a coordinate plane, so that we can start to draw the graph. Let me make that just a little bit smaller. So we're going to mark out on this graph where the vertical asymptote is. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. We have a horizontal asymptote that is right on top of the x-axis. That's y equals 0. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And we have found one ordered pair, and that is 0, negative 1. So right now, I don't feel confident in drawing the graph. So I'd like to choose another point on this graph. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have some ordered pairs on both sides of your vertical asymptote. I already have an ordered pair to the left of that vertical asymptote, so I want to find an ordered pair to the right. So I'm going to choose an x value. I'll choose x equal 4 substitute it into the function f of 4 is 3 over 4 minus 3. That's 3 over 1, which is 3. So now I have the ordered pair for 3, which is right here. Now I'm going to use the asymptotes as kind of guide rails on drawing the graph. Your graph will get attracted to those asymptotes. So I'm going to approach the horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote using that y-intercept that I found earlier. And I'm going to draw going towards the vertical asymptote and towards the horizontal asymptote using the 0.43 that we just found. So now we have a sketch of this rational function 3 over x minus 3. The next question says, follow the nine-step graphing strategy to sketch the graph of the rational function, find intercepts and asymptotes, and removable discontinuities. So first we're going to find the domain. To find the domain, we set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. The reason we're doing this is because we don't want to divide by 0. Dividing by 0 would be undefined. So we're going to exclude 1, shade everything else. 
So from negative infinity to 1, union with 1 to infinity is the domain. The next part says, does F have any removable discontinuities? Removable discontinuities are like holes in the graph, and you only get them when you're able to cancel out a common factor from your function. So let's take a look at f of x. f of x is 2x plus 8 over x plus 1. I could factor out a 2 in the numerator to make that x plus 4. But you can see I don't have any common factors to cancel out. So there is no removable discontinuity. And it would only be if you were factoring. Uh, canceling out a factor with x in it, a common factor with x. The next part says check for symmetry. So we're looking to see if this graph is going to have origin or y-axis symmetry. The way we test for symmetry is by calculating f of negative x. So f of negative x would be 2 times negative x plus 8 and negative x minus 1. If we simplify that, we get negative 2x plus 8 over negative x minus 1. And what we're looking for, is this the same as the original, or is it the opposite of the original? The same, if they were the same, it would be um, y-axis symmetry, and if it's opposite, it's origin symmetry. Um, it's clearly not the same, and it's also not the opposite. So we're going to say this graph has no symmetry. We're going to find y, the y-intercept. Find a y-intercept by letting x equal 0. So let's find f of 0. That's 2 times 0 plus 8 over 0 minus 1. That's 8 over negative 1, which is negative 8. So we have a y-intercept at 0, negative 8. And in your blank, you would just type negative 8. Then find any x-intercepts. We find an x-intercept by letting y equal 0. So we're setting our whole function equal to 0. We're going to multiply both sides by that denominator. We get 0 equals 2x plus 8. Subtract 8 on both sides, we get 2x equals negative 8. Divide by 2, and x equals negative 4. So we have an x-intercept at negative 4. The next part says to find any vertical asymptotes. Now when you're finding vertical asymptotes, you want to make sure your function is in lowest terms. And like we said earlier, um, right here, we factored it, and there was nothing to cancel out, so it is in lowest terms. And once you have it in lowest terms, you're going to set your denominator equal to 0, just like we did over here, finding the domain. And uh, that's going to give us our vertical asymptote. So this example has a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. The next part says determine whether your graph has a horizontal or slant asymptote. So I'm going to take you over here to the rules for horizontal asymptotes. We need to know uh, the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator, and we're going to compare them to see if one is less than the other, or they equal one more than the other, or a lot more than the other. So for our function, let's recall our function f of x is equal to 2x plus 8 over x minus 1. We need to know the degree of the numerator. So what's the power on that x? 
that power is a 1, so our degree of the numerator is 1. We need to know the power on that x. That's a 1. And n is equal to m. There, those degrees are equal to each other. When the degrees are equal to each other, our horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the leading coefficients. So we're going to use the leading coefficient of 2 from the numerator and the leading coefficient of 1 from the denominator. We're going to do the ratio 2 over 1, that's y equals 2. It's the horizontal asymptote. The next part says plot the points choosing values um, between each intercept and on each on either side of each ver vertical asymptote. So we're given some x values here and we want to substitute those x values into the function to get the y values. So for x equals negative 5, we're going to find f of negative 5. That's 2 times negative 5 plus 8 over negative 5 minus 1. So negative 10 plus 8 over negative 6. Negative 2 over negative 6 reduces to 1 third. So this is the ordered pair negative 5 1 third. Then we have an x value of 0. So f of 0 is 2 times 0 plus 8 over 0 minus 1. That's 8 over negative 1, which is negative 8. So we have the ordered pair, 0, negative 8. An x value of 2, that's f of 2, equals 2 times 2 plus 8 over 2 minus 1. It's 4 plus 8 over 1, and that's 12 over 1, which is 12. The last one is the ordered pair 2, 12. And the last thing we want to do is to draw the graph. So I'm going to do this without looking at the answer choices. So if you remember, we had a vertical asymptote. Let me kind of zoom out here. Let's get all the information. We had a vertical asymptote at x equals 1, so I'm drawing a dashed vertical line. We have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 2. Here's our vertical asymptote, y equals 2. The dashed horizontal line there. We also got um, a y-intercept and an x-intercept, a y-intercept of negative 8. An x-intercept of negative 4. We also got these points right here, negative 5 and 1 -third. We got 212. And with all this information, I'm going to be able to connect these points right here. And you follow those asymptotes. And you want to follow these asymptotes as well. So that gives me. looks like this one, this one here. Sketch the graph of f of x equals 5x over x squared minus 25. So we're going to start with finding the restricted values. Find the restricted values you set the denominator equal to 0. We have x squared minus 25 equals 0. We can add 25 to both sides. 
and take the square root of both sides to get x equals plus or minus 5. So we have these two restricted values, x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 5. Now the restricted values on the graph could either produce a vertical asymptote or a hole in the graph. The more technical term for hole would be removable discontinuity. So I need to figure out whether these two restricted values are going to produce a vertical asymptote or that hole in the graph. So we do that by factoring our function. We factor the numerator completely and factor the denominator completely. The numerator is in factored form, but the denominator is a difference of squares. So we can write that as x plus 5 times x minus 5. And then we look to see if there are any common factors between the numerator and denominator. And since we have no common factors, we have no removable discontinuities. So that means that both of these restricted values are going to be vertical asymptotes. But then I want to look for horizontal asymptotes. To find horizontal asymptotes, you're going to look at the degree of the numerator. And the degree of the numerator will be the highest power on x, which is 1. We'll call that n. And we need the degree of the denominator. And the degree of the denominator is going to be 2. That's the highest power on x. It's only the highest power on x when you have it in the expanded form. If it's in factored form, you're going to add these powers together. You're going to add the power of x from each factor. So we have a degree of 1 for the numerator and a degree of 2 for the denominator. Now when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, like we have, your function will have a horizontal asymptote right on top of the x-axis, which is y equals 0. So then we're going to look for um, intercepts. So let's look for a y-intercept by letting x equal 0. So that gives f of 0 equals 5 times 0 over 0 squared minus 25. That works out to be 0 over negative 25, which is 0. So we do have a y-intercept of 0, 0. We're going to look for x-intercepts. And you find x-intercepts by letting y equal 0. In function notation, that's f of x equals 0. And that gives us the equation 0 equals 5x over x squared minus 25. So to solve this, we would multiply by that denominator on both sides. And that would reduce the equation down to 0 equals 5x. Divide by 5, and we get x equals 0. So we have an x-intercept at 0, 0. So we're going to start to sketch the graph of our rational function. So let me get a grid for us to graph on. And this function, we have figured out that it has vertical asymptotes at negative 5 and positive 5. I'm going to draw dashed lines at those asymptotes. We have also figured out that it has a horizontal asymptote that's right on top of the x-axis, the line y equals 0.
And one other thing that we figured out is that we have an x-intercept and a y-intercept at 0, 0. Now we need a little bit more information about this graph so that we can tell whether our graph will go to infinity or negative infinity near this vertical asymptote or infinity or negative infinity near that asymptote. So for me to figure that out, I'm going to take those away. I'm going to choose some test points that are on either side of those asymptotes. So I want to choose a negative 6 and a negative 4, a positive 4, and a positive 6. And this will give me the information that I need to know whether the graph will go to infinity or negative infinity. I'm going to calculate f of negative 6. That's 5 times negative 6. And I'll use the factor form. It's negative 6 plus 5 times negative 6 minus 5. So we have negative 30 over negative 1 times negative 11. That gives negative 30 over 11. We want to calculate f of negative 4. That is 5 times negative 4 over negative 4 plus 5. It's negative 4 minus 5. And that gives negative 20 over 1 times negative 9. And that is 20 over 9, positive 20 over 9. Then we want to find f of 6. f of 6 is 5 times 6 over 6 plus 5 times 6 minus 5. And that's going to give 30 over 11 times 1. 30 over 11. And f of 4 is 5 times 4 over 4 plus 5. And 4 minus 5. That's 20 over 9 times negative 1. That gives me a negative 20 over 9. So you should probably get decimal approximation so that you know where to plot these points. Let me get my calculator. I'm just going to get my little calculator here. We have 30 over 11 gives me about 2.7. And 20 over 9 gives me about 2.2. So 2.7, negative 2.7, and 2.2. 2.7 and negative 2.2. So if I plot these ordered pairs, I would have negative 6 and negative 2.7, negative 4 and positive 2.2, 6 and 2.7, And 4 and negative 2.2. Now with these pieces of information, I know that my y will go to negative infinity to the left of 5, or sorry, negative 5. It will go to positive infinity to the right of negative 5. It will go to negative infinity to the left of 5 and positive infinity to the right of 5. We can also connect these three points in the middle 
And then based on the fact that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, I know the graph will approach zero as my x goes to infinity and negative infinity. So this gives us a sketch of the graph of 5x over x squared minus 25. For this question, we want to graph the function f of x equals x plus 5 times x plus 3 over x squared minus 36. So this is one of our rational functions. And I really want to know where the asymptotes are occurring. So I'm going to start by factoring the denominator. That denominator is a difference of squares. And it factors into x plus 6 times x minus 6. Now based on that, I know that this rational function is going to have discontinuities at x equals negative 6 and x equals 6. So I'm probably using a, a word that belongs in a calculus class there. We usually say restricted value instead of discontinuity. So if I substitute a negative 6 and a positive 6 into this rational function, it's going to be undefined. Now these restrictions produce in the graph either a vertical asymptote or a whole removable discontinuity in the graph. And I don't know which one it is unless I have my function factored out the way it is right now. So when you have a common factor, you're going to have a removable discontinuity. But if you don't have a common factor, you have a vertical asymptote. So since I don't have a common factor of x plus 6, that means that the restricted value of negative 6 is going to be a vertical asymptote. And there's no common factor of x plus 6 in the numerator either. So x equals 6 is going to be a vertical asymptote as well. So no common factors, no whole or removable discontinuity in the graph. But we do have two vertical asymptotes. So then I'm going to look for horizontal asymptotes. And horizontal asymptotes are found when we pay attention to the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So the denominator degree is going to be a 2 because that's the highest power on x and we call that m. In the numerator we have a function that's factored but if we were to multiply this out we would end up getting an x squared. Maybe I should write that in black. If we multiplied this out, we would get x squared plus 3x plus 5x plus 15. And that highest power on x from the numerator is a 2 as well. So we have a degree of 2 in the numerator, which we call n. Once we've identified the degree of the numerator and denominator, then we compare them to each other. So in this case, n is equal to m. And we have memorized that when the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, we do have a horizontal asymptote. And that horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. Now our leading coefficient here is the x squared, and it has a coefficient of 1. And our leading term in the denominator is x squared, and it has a coefficient of 1. So ratio of 1 over 1 is 1. So this rational function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Now some other information that might be helpful would be x-intercepts and y-intercepts. And we may need some additional points on top of that as well. So looking for a y-intercept, I would let x equal 0. That would give f of 0 equals 
we can use the factored form 0 plus 5 times 0 plus 3 over 0 squared minus 36. So that is going to be 15 over negative 36. And we can reduce that. 3 goes into both of those. 3 goes into 15 5 times. 3 goes into 36 12 times. So we get a negative 5 over 12. Then when I'm looking for x-intercepts, I let y equal 0, or in function notation, I'm setting f of x equal 0. And that gives x plus 5 times x plus 3 over x squared minus 36 equals 0. This looks initially pretty messy to solve, but if we multiply by the denominator on both sides, that's going to cancel out from the left, and then on the other side we have 0 times x squared minus 36, so we get a 0. And we can set each factor equal to 0. We get x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 3. So we have x-intercepts of negative 5 and 3. Now I think I'm getting closer to being able to sketch a graph of this. So let me get my coordinate plane here. And let's write down some of the things that we've gotten. We have vertical asymptotes at negative 6 and positive 6. So that I'm drawing the vertical dashed line at negative 6 and positive 6. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And we have x-intercepts at negative 5 and negative 3. And we have a y-intercept at negative 5 over 12, which is kind of a small number, so about right here. And I have quite a bit of information to draw the graph in between the two vertical asymptotes, but no information to the left and to the right. And what I need to know is whether my graph will go to infinity or negative infinity. So whether you're going to have your graph above your vertical, excuse me, your horizontal asymptote or below, and same thing over here, whether it's going to be above or below. So I'm going to pick a test point, let's say negative 8 and positive 8, and substitute it in so I can see what's happening to the graph in those areas. So f of 8 is 8 plus 5 over 8 plus 3 over 8 squared minus 36. So that is a positive times a positive over a positive, and that's positive. So that tells me that my graph will be in this positive part over here. And then if I try negative 8, it's going to be negative 8 plus 5, negative 8 plus 3, over negative 8 squared minus 36. This is a negative times a negative over a positive, which is a positive. That tells me my graph will be up here. And when I'm sketching that part of the graph, what I'm doing is I'm following the vertical and horizontal asymptote as guidelines. And then in the middle, I'm going to connect these three points. I can do better than that. So it'll probably go something like this.
But I'm going to check one more thing to be sure. I want to check to see if this graph crosses the horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to check this right here. I'm going to see if f of x ever equals 1. That's my horizontal asymptote. So x plus 5 times x plus 3 over x squared minus 36. Let's see if that equals 1. And that is x plus 5 times x plus 3 equals x squared minus 36. If I multiply by that denominator on both sides, I can multiply this out and I get x squared plus 3x plus 5x plus 15 equals x squared minus 36. I'll combine like terms. That gives 3x plus 5x. That's 8x. And I'll subtract x squared on both sides. That gives 8x plus 15 equals negative 36. Subtract 15 on both sides. And that gives 8x equals negative 51. Divide by 8. And x equals negative 51 over 8. Let's see what that is approximately. So six and three quarters, six point three seven five, negative six point three seven five. So, what does that mean for our graph? Okay, I want to do one more test point. So I'm going to erase this right here. And do one more test point. And I want it to be in between. In between negative 6.375 and negative 6. So maybe negative 6.1. Negative 6.1 plus 5. Negative 6.1 plus 3 over negative 6.1 squared minus 36. So what does that come out to be? That's going to be a negative times a negative over a positive. So I still get a positive. Is that this graph comes down like this, touches that, and then goes like that. So after thinking about this graph a little bit more, um, I have adjusted how I've drawn the curve on the left-hand side a little bit. And I thought a little bit more about why I was having trouble graphing this piece. And I think it's because I um, only focused on whether I had a positive or negative here instead of getting the actual y values. And if I had the actual y values, I would be able to see whether the graph went um, below that horizontal asymptote and came back to it. So I'm going to spend just a couple minutes actually finding the y values of these extra points 
and you draw a better sketch of this graph. And so we're getting a y value of 5.1 when we have an x of 8. So make sure I type that in right. Negative 8 plus 5 times negative 8 plus 3 over negative 8 squared minus 36. So we have about 0.5 for that one. That's really, really helpful for me to see that that is below 1 because that means it's below the horizontal asymptote. And we have 2.81. So once again, this is really helpful for me to see that this is now above 1, which is above that horizontal asymptote. So I've already redrawn this graph considering those pieces of information. But let's put in the points that we have there. Negative 8 and 0 0.5 is about here. We already mentioned that the graph crosses that horizontal asymptote at negative 6.35. And then at negative 6.1, 2.8, we have that other point. So I can see here that the, the graph crosses that horizontal asymptote and then it's going to come back to the horizontal asymptote. Now I feel much more confident about how I've drawn that graph. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.